We have outlined some of the principles of the Enlightenment. Now let's look at some of the peoples. And we're going to talk a lot about John Locke, the grandfather of, of Enlightenment political thought. We've talked about him before, particularly when it came to his protests against the, James, the rule of James II. Locke approached the question of how uh, and why governments exist. In particular, what is the nature of government? In previous centuries, the basic idea was that it was created by God. Kings served because they were anointed and appointed by God, so they were ruled by what was called rule, divine right. God ordained that people would be kings and ordained that others would serve them. But the problem is that the scientific revolution rather upset this great chain of being. So things like John, thinkers like John Locke would wonder if there was some other way to explain why and how government exists. Locke concluded that the government exists as a political contract between the rulers and the ruled. And basically, what that means is that political contract means that the people would give up some of their liberty in exchange for security. Locke argued that in the earliest times, people lived without government in a state of nature. They owned property, they, owned, they were free, and they could do what they liked with their property in their lives. The problem, however, is that somebody that was stronger than them could bully them. They could actually rob, enslave, or even kill uh, weaker individuals. So people would come together and form governments by agreement. They gave up some of this liberty and some of the property in return for protection and security. Locke said that unrestricted liberty begets chaos, so people must give up some of it simply in order to survive. The rulers provided justice, security, and other benefits to the ruled, and the ruled provided taxes, service, and loyalty to the ruler. But this is a contract, and as part of the contract, the rulers would have to recognize that human beings have natural rights. Get the, listen to that word again. Natural, God-given rights. And these rights, of course, would be life, liberty, and property. You probably have heard of this. Uh, you've heard Thomas Jefferson's version, but of course he says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is the right to do... So, excuse me. People must have freedom, Locke wrote. But freedom is not the right to do whatever you want. It's the right to do whatever you want, provided you don't infringe upon another person's freedom. In other words, freedom means responsible and reasonable behavior. Locke went on to write that if a ruler violates these rights in any way and does not live up to his part of the, of the contract, they have the right, the, the rule to have the right to overthrow that ruler and get one who will keep his side of the contract. So you can see, this is a way to justify political revolution. And our forefathers really knew John Locke. In fact, if you were to read uh, Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence and then listen to this lecture again, you would see a lot of the same elements in there.